Dr Roger Barker is the Institute of Directors London-based Director of Policy and Corporate Governance and a former investment banker. So why has he been asked to give a talk for Biosphere Isle of Man? Are we finally acknowledging that climate change, mass extinctions and loss of habitat is connected to the lives we lead and the business models of the companies which supply our services? Dr Barker joined me via a web link. In, in a former life, you were an investment banker. Um, what's that got to do with with Biosphere Isle of Man? Well, I think, you know, the fact that someone like me um, is talking about the environment, is talking about biodiversity and climate change, you know, reflects how the world has changed, you know, over the last 15 to 20 years. You know, maybe 20 years ago, uh, the sort of people who were who were talking about um, environmental issues were um, a rather fringe group. You know, perhaps people with long beards and long hair and sandals. Uh, you know, that that type of um, enthusiast. Um, but now I think um, concerns around these type of issues really have gone mainstream. You know, people, everyone, or almost everyone, I think, recognises that we need to transform the way our society works, our our businesses work, to make it environmentally and climate friendly. So everyone needs to know about these things, even investment bankers, um, you know, people working in the accounting profession, um, and directors, uh, very importantly, the directors and, of companies. And, and in a way, I suppose you, you might say that investment bankers, probably more than anybody, needs, uh, needs to have an understanding and, and a, 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 you know, a, a more, it's more than an understanding, an ability to interact uh, with uh, this, this sort of global ambition to, to uh, uh, address climate change. Um, I, I mean, I, I think sometimes uh, that there's an assumption that government is there and government will solve all the problems. But quite frankly, uh, governments do not have the resource needed to, to change all this round, do they? No, I think, you know, it, it, we really need a partnership between all aspects of society to address these problems. Um, you know, individuals, the decisions they're making about how they heat their homes, what you know, what they buy in terms of what they eat, um, you know, the, the everyday decision making, that, that plays a key role. Business plays a key role. Finance plays a very important role because finance determines, you know, where resources are allocated, you know, what type of activities are invested in. And all of that needs to change in much more of an environmentally friendly direction. And and then in terms that uh, of um, your role at the moment, I mean, you, you're uh, uh, at the Institute of Directors, uh, you're the Director of Policy and Corporate Governance um, and member of the management board there. Uh, presumably, you, you do an awful lot more of discussion and talk about how uh, what your what the environmental impact is than perhaps you would have ever done um, maybe even as, as recently as uh, five years ago. Yeah, I, yes, I do think there has been a, a sea change just even in the last five years. Um, people, I think, were a bit worried perhaps as when the pandemic hit that the um, the growing awareness and, and prioritisation of, of climate change and the environment was going to be pushed off off the pedestal. Uh, but that, that simply hasn't happened. The, it looks like there has been a, a long term shift in attitudes um, in all in all corners of society. And we see this in the surveys that we do with IOD members. You know, that I mean, IOD members are, are business leaders, but they're they're citizens just like everyone else, and they have the same concerns and the same worries about the impact that 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 you know modern business and fossil fuels uh, and modern society is having on the environment, um, and they want to do something about it. Although often they they then often not sure where to start. That's been another, I suppose, bit of feedback that we've received from our members. And of course, well, th this is part of the problem as well, isn't it? Um, um, everyone now, um, pretty much everyone has signed up to the idea that we need to do something about this. Um, but having absolutely absolute clarity as to what any particular business can and should do uh, is maybe less certain, uh, you know, the understanding uh, that uh, p by putting a whole load of uh, photovoltaic um, uh, cells on, 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 on your roof, 
um, will have a, a particular impact, but then there may be an, a, another associated cost with it. And um, trying to actually get your head round all of this as a business and understanding, you know, so, sometimes I think sometimes businesses um, leap into doing something because something is better than nothing. Um, and it's quite difficult to understand the environmental impacts uh, of everything that you do. I, I think that's right. I, I think it is quite confusing, actually, for, for business and at the moment. You know, the, there's, there are lots of standards. There are lots of best practices out there. Um, you know, we still are quite, I think, an immature stage in terms of our development as an economy um, from a sustainability point of view. I think, you know, that that will will change over time. I mean, certainly the one of the IUD's job, uh, jobs, I think, is to you know help our members address these issues. Um, but in the next year or two, I think we're going to have things like uh, uh, new accounting standards and ways of reporting, which are going to be defined uh, by, by, by regulators, um, something which in the past has been done on a voluntary basis, but which will now become mainstream um, into, into the economy. Um, and I think as this develops, it, it will become easier. Um, but at the moment, it is, it is I think, quite tricky. And um, yeah, we, we've just got to help directors, help business leaders through this, this morass um, of different information that's out there. And I suppose the other risk uh, in, associated with all this is that we are so busy uh, measuring uh, how unsuccessful we are in, in meeting all the various objectives uh, that we're not actually getting on with with doing the uh, the, the the real work of of um, uh, reducing climate uh, change, re- reducing carbon emissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, although I do think you know measurement is very important. Um, you know, there there is a saying that you know what isn't measured. Uh, doesn't get managed and I think there is there is some truth in that I mean of course measurement is only the beginning and we have to use that information to actually you know develop action plans targets and drive real change um, but off but it, it is important nonetheless though to try and quantify if, you know for, for a small firm to just start by quantifying their uh, existing carbon footprint you know what sort of an impact are they currently having? Because um, that that's the baseline that they then can use uh, to develop plans for the future, um, targets for the future, and can and can measure their performance again. Again, so it's data it do, does matter. Indeed. Um, so you you've been asked to uh, to give a, a, a lecture uh, by Biosphere Isle of Man, uh, and that's to take place on Wednesday the twenty fifth, and um, I suppose. Uh, it would be interesting, perhaps, to to have a, a bit of an understanding. I mean, obviously, don't give all the secrets away, but what what sort of things are you going to be uh, discussing um, in in that lecture? Yes, I'm. I mean, I'm I, I'm going to be looking at where we currently stand um, in terms of climate change, and also, you know, making the point that business is keen to to really play its part in addressing um, the, this heat unique societal challenge, um, then I'm going to go on to say um, that I think there, there are kind of three key building blocks which we need to address if if actually this is all going to happen. Um, and I'm going to uh, talk about the need for the green incentives um, so that it actually becomes commercially beneficial for companies to do the right thing, you know, to act in a green way. Um, And that is often not always the case uh, out there for many businesses. And that, I think, will need a partnership between government and between uh, business uh, to work out how we can kind of incentivize the economy to to move more in a green direction. And and, and what sort Um, of things, what sort of incentives do you think are going to be most effective? Well, I think uh, you know if we think back on on some of the things that have been done in the past that really have worked well, and um, probably well the first one uh, that comes to mind was just the simple act of government uh, requiring people to pay for a plastic bag, five pence for a plastic bag back in 2015. 
The result of that was a 97% decline in the use of, uh, of, of single-use plastic bags. So, you know, that was, an, that was an incredibly effective way of creating an incentive to do the right thing. And another example, I think, was when um, the UK government kick-started the whole um, offshore wind industry uh, pro by providing quite targeted subsidies to, for that industry and and a way for that industry to kind of connect into the into the grid electricity system of the UK, which that was incredibly successful. Um, so for the future, something that the IOD is is proposing is that companies that achieve net zero and can, can accredit the fact that they have, have achieved net zero. Um, uh, should be able to benefit from a lower rate of corporation tax compared to other companies. So, you know, providing a real commercial incentive for, for companies to plan a route um, to net zero. Um, and I think, you know, there are many other um, initiatives and ideas out there which are which point in this same direction. Um, you know, d don't make it difficult for, for companies to do the right thing. Um, incentivize them to, to do the right thing. And that, 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 I think, is a key building block. And, of course, ultimately, the, the, the goal is that the economy provides the incentives because, actually, this is what people choose to do. Um, and, you know, the, the, the polluting alternative is, is considered to be um, n not acceptable anymore. Um, so, so they would want to, to, to use these, the, the, these things. Yes, I think, you know, to some extent, it's a combination of um, different factors. So part of it, of course, is is people's changing attitudes. Um, and, and that I think we're seeing um, develop hugely. You know, as you say, simply this feeling that um, we as citizens, as consumers, as employees, um, as bosses, you know, we want to do the right thing. And um, there's almost like a norm of behavior develops in society to to. Um, make decisions with 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 climate change and the environment in mind. Um, but I think also you, need, you do need to combine that those kind of changing attitudes with uh, the you know the change in the way that the the market system uh, the the economy works, so that there is actually a financial incentive as well to do the right thing. Because uh, you know human beings are motivated by by different uh, things. So some. Um, you know, have very strong ethical principles, and, and that's what what drives their behaviour. Others are more are more um, driven by fi by financial factors, um, and we also need to appeal to that that group of people as well. And, and actually, a really good example of that on the island in terms of financial uh, uh, incentives uh, driving people's behaviours was uh, back in uh, was it two thousand and eight when uh, there were particularly high oil prices and um, we have around 40,000 homes on the island and something in the region of seven to 800 homes fitted wood-burning stoves that uh, particular year because uh, wood at the time was relatively cheap to buy and uh, the oil and gas that was heating their homes was, was very expensive. It uh, is about making the, the, the greener alternative uh, cheaper and um, more uh, um, attractive, really, to the consumer, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and and the, you know this is, I think, something um, which we'll, we're go going to be facing in 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 a pretty short period of time. Um, issues like how do we make the transition to uh, you know away from um, the main source of domestic heating in the in the UK, which is which is gas fired boilers towards a more environmentally um, heating system. Um, and that, of course, is going to, to cost money. Um, and it, we haven't really sorted out, um, you know, who, who's going to pay for this? Um, how's it, how is it going to be financed? How and, and a similar kind of transition is going to be taking place with respect to um, uh, vehicles, you know, the transition from from fossil fuel driven vehicles to, to electric vehicles. Um, you know how how are we going to make sure that that transition is is completed? Um, we we've, we've got to give the right incentives. Um, that will that will I think require a big role for government as well as a big role for business. Because if effectively, what we and are likely to see is uh, we we have the the conventional world that we're used to now, and uh, in 
hopefully 20 years time we will have a, new, a, a different version of the world um, which uh, is much less polluting and much more sustainable um, the hard bit is always moving from the one to the other because you have to retain, in effect, two different systems. Uh, you have all the logic and uh, knowledge that goes with the former system um, and moving everyone, uh, you know, the whole of society, from one thing that they are very familiar with to something that they are unfamiliar with, which may actually be much better for them. It may be cheaper, less polluting, um, but uh, actually getting that change um, is the the difficult bit, and that is where government really needs to step in, isn't it, to provide some forms of incentive? Yes, and I, I, we shouldn't underestimate this. You know, the the sort of transformation which which we're looking for is really uh, unprecedented, or almost in in human history. I think you know mm. we're we're asking society and the economy to shift from from an e economy that was fundamentally based on fossil fuel energy sources um, and which in in its economic transactions you know didn't take account of the externalities that that that, that business or, or or anyone else was was imposing on the environment um, and, and wider society. They did just, they weren't part of the of the cost calculations that you that you make when you calculate whether you've made a profit or loss. So we're shifting from from that society to something completely new. Um, but I think you know we, what we don't want to do is is sort of throw the the baby out with a with the bathwater. Um, I think that it, it it is possible to make a market economy work in a better way, in an environmentally friendly way. We don't need to sort of um, go to something radically different. But even even if we're adjusting the nature of our market economy, it's still a huge shift. And that is going to take some very experienced or knowledgeable uh, directors um, of companies to be able to actually make that shift. And, and uh, is, I think you mentioned earlier to me that, that that's one of the second planks of, of, of the uh, discussion that you're hoping to have in uh, on Wednesday evening. That That's right. So green governance, in other words. And, uh, you know, that as in any organization, it's the board of directors that is, is in charge of, of, of governments. And I mean, first and foremost, it's going to need the right people sitting around the boardroom table at each of our organizations. You know, ha are those people, do those people have the right skills, the right knowledge? Uh, do they understand how to actually think about sustainability issues when they're having their strategic discussions and build build them into the decision making process? And it is. It does require, I think, um, you know, new skills and new knowledge. I mean, how many directors really understand, you know, the difference between scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions? You know, which is a big part of the the kind of anatomy of, of when you discuss um, greenhouse gas emissions. You know, do they understand those concepts and how they can apply them to their to their organisations? And it, so it does require. Some, some new skills um, and perhaps slightly different types of people sitting on boards compared with the the usual suspects that we've had in the past who primarily been finance people or people from you know a more traditional general management background because of course there is so much information out there as well isn't there um that uh, some of it in, entirely uh, legitimate and good. In fact, most of it, I, I would imagine, is uh, other information is 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 um, willfully uh, placed uh, in in our, our homes through social media and, and the like uh, to try and discourage us from moving on this uh, particular green journey and part of the role of directors is trying to fathom um, the, 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 the vast amount of information and try and understand which bits are most relevant to us. Yes, no, absolutely. But on the other hand, though, I think you know, incorporating sustainability uh, into your governance is ultimately it isn't rocket science. You mm. know, it, it, it involves some quite kind of very logical steps, namely um, you know, understanding what your, the carbon footprint is of your organization, 
developing a plan to to actually um, reduce emissions and move to a net zero situation, you know, defining targets, interim targets and long term targets to achieve that, and putting in place um, you know the the people and the structures to to monitor progress, um, and 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 also to. Um, report and disclose how you're doing to your to the outside world to stakeholders so that people continue to to trust your organization um so you know those are the, the those key steps i think are are, are pretty clear and, been, and, and are applied by boards in many other areas but but you know now it's time to apply them to sustainability well sadly we are drawing towards the end of of the program now um I suppose the the obvious question that I would ask is, are are you confident that we are uh, capable um, of meeting the the exacting requirements of of moving towards a more sustainable future? Um, And uh, I suppose the other question, uh, being capable is one thing. Are are we actually going to do it? Yeah, I... I don't think we can take it for granted because there are some, you know, there are major obstacles um, and you know, including the fact that um, you know, a lot of uh, policy makers work on quite a short term time scale, um, you know, given the, ele- the way the electoral cycle works. And what we really need here are, are policy makers and businesses that, that plan for the long term and, and, you know, put in place a consistent strategy, which is really followed. But I I am I suppose I'm more optimistic than ever given just the, the the general societal consensus around the need to address climate change and of course the other the other factor which which unfortunately is going to become all too apparent in in, in the very in the near term um, are the the negative implications of um, a warming climate you know the extremes in uh, temperature, adverse weather events, and so on, which we saw we saw last year, and these are just going to continue and, ex- and accelerate. So that will be an ever-present reminder of the need to do something. So I think um, I, I'm, I would say I'm cautiously optimistic, but I don't think we can take anything for granted. And I suppose the final question is: Is it first first trip to the Isle of Man, or have you uh, been over before? No, I have been over on a couple of previous occasions, uh, both times to visit the the IOD uh, branch on the island. And it's always impressed me um, what an active um, and engaged branch um, the Isle of Man has. It's it's a the IOD on the Isle of Man seems to be a real hub for directors and, and business people. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to catching up with people once again. And if, um, well, and, and it's a horrible thing to ask someone it, it, to, to, to do in, in, in a minute, um, but what, what would be the top things that you would suggest that businesses need to do uh, to, to, to properly embrace what's, what's going to be needed here to, to, to move to this uh, more sustainable future? Yeah, so I think it would be, um, think about, have you got the right skills within your organisation to think about sustainability? Um, Work, work out a plan for how you're going to get to net zero. Um, start by measuring your carbon footprint um, in a, for a baseline year. Then work out targets and a, and a, a timeline for how you're going to, to make progress. Um, involve the entire organization in, in trying to achieve that and, and make sure that everything you discuss around the boardroom table takes it into account. Um, and communicate with the outside world in terms of what your plans are um, and how you're doing and encourage other organisations to follow your example. Well, I'm sure with uh, with, with this interview uh, ringing in their ears, people will be in- inspired to come along and uh, and listen to the, the lecture. And um, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to, to hearing what you have to say. Dr. Barker's lecture takes place at the Manx Museum this Wednesday the 25th of January at 7pm, but you need to book via Eventbrite tomorrow at the latest. Let me know your thoughts and views on the programme by contacting philgorn at manxradio.com. For now though, I'm Phil Gorn, Goromayo, thanks for listening.